So I got contacted by a fellow called Bailey who sent me a picture of stuff and said, do you want it? Uh, apparently he put it up on multiple forums. Uh, so you might have seen these in the past. And uh, yeah, he sort of wanted to sell it all at once. So uh, a lot of people in the comments said, why don't you try Look Mum No Computer? Because he is stupid enough to take the risk on something like this. And they were right. I am stupid enough to take the risk on something like that. <laughs> so I went for the punt off a uh, pre-image and I travelled all the way over to Stevenage to go and pick some stuff up. This is the furthest I've travelled for a couple of months. This is the first time I've justified travelling further afield for work and stuff. Anyway, let's cue the disjointed footage. Hello, today we're in Bailey's garage in Stevenage, yeah, right? In it. sunny Stevenage and <laughs> I'm picking this stuff up today. <laughs> but... He has an awful lot of other things, bad boy, the SWT PC, and I'm still trying to figure out whether I, I should get it because it's absolutely beautiful. It's yeah. got the it's got the boots and oh look at it. It's a 68, 6800, isn't it? Yeah, and you got all the manuals. Okay. It's a complete Oh god, look at that. There's a load of paperwork that goes with it though. Yeah, that's kind it. Of isn't... You've got pages of the stuff. Yeah. And then you've got the floor, you've got a lot of discs. You've got so much stuff in this place at the minute. Like, where, where did, where did you end up with it all? Literally, past two years, just going all different places, collecting. Don't we all? This bit's the awesome bit. I love that. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> so this is uh, inside. Here is a mystery machine, right? Yeah, mystery. No one knows what it is. What the heck? It's a big boy. It's cool, isn't it? So it's got connect. So, so it's like RF signal stuff. So it's from the General Radio Company. Uh, oversized sort of BNC style RF connector thingamajiggies. General Radio Company, big old chunk. What is going on here? So yeah, just had a pretty crazy time looking through the whole place. It doesn't look full, but I promise you, there's a lot of stuff, so we're going to take it back now and figure out what's going on. Cheers, man. Thank you. Sound, bro. So we got back. The van was a clapped out rental. It, it broke down a few times and there was no breakdown uh, number or anything. So it took quite a while to get home. But we're back and the pile is on the floor. So let's have a quick look. And from the top, we've got a couple of Ferguson uh, CRT uh, computer monitors. These are the green ones, so they're gonna be phosphor green. They're gonna be pretty cool. So there's a lot of interesting different things. So this is a transistor curve tracer. If anybody knows of any of these things, uh, please comment below. We've got a nice chunky Marconi signal generator. That's quite a nice voltmeter. Looks like a little power supply. Um, there's a tiny little DIY reader, writer thing. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it reads and writes, but it's Marconi oscillator, which is quite a high frequency one. So I'm not sure how much use that will be, as well as uh, this is directly connected to a circuit magnification meter. Let's do not use. These are not perfect tested pieces of equipment, so you know they could be reasonably dangerous. And trying to get it passed for a pat test uh, for a functioning in the museum is might be might be a bit challenging. Got a number of these DC voltage calibrators. Still, yet again, I'm not sure what they're going to be used for in a musical setting, but it's worth a go. They could be voltage sources. We got this lovely thing. I've got to be honest, I'm not really sure what it is. Is it a rheostat? Are they rheostats? This is a really nice and big and chunky kilovolt meter. It's as big as your hand. There's a lot of these things might not be useful in a musical setting, but with a bit of creativity, you know, somebody might pop around with an idea and suggest something and we can see if it can work and stuff. So this is an oscillator for, from quarantine. Yeah, obviously. And then there's another test oscillator as well. Also, these are absolutely beautiful. Bailey said there was about 60 of these sitting around and unfortunately I reckon the rest of them are now in the trash, which is a shame because they look, they look, they're gonna look amazing on the museum walls. Because just look at that, like, and then different other types of resistors from way back when. Oh, they're absolutely beautiful. It's a real shame that the rest of them are most likely in the bin now. This variac right here means we'll be able to take the voltage from zero right up to 240 volts without hopefully blowing anything. However, some of this might have been turned on recently anyway, because usually if there's a plug on the back of something, somebody's going to plug it in and just see if it lights up, aren't they? So I, you know, things will work. I couldn't help myself and I have plugged in and turned this on. Uh, most of it's working. There's a couple of sketchy things, but 
it's 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 nearly it's nearly there so let's have a look at this universal bridge by wayne kerr yeah i did say that right wayne kerr uh you you probably have heard of wayne kerr <laughs> i can't i can't oh man i'm sorry so this is absolutely beautiful because it has two magic eyes in the front of this universal bridge let's wait until it warms up uh i'm not sure how to use this in a musical setting but what you know you never say, never say never i have a feeling one of them might have been replaced at some point i don't know whether they came as factory two separate colors but the a the actual fact that they are two separate colors it makes it really quite quite a strike in piece first off i need to track down all of my sort of test equipment uh, adapters and things like this and that the thing is is the last test equipment rock themed video was nearly a year ago now and that is because uh yeah i had to move out of my old place in quite a rush just before the first lockdown and put a lot of stuff that i had in uh, in a storage for a little bit and it just caught of sort of ruined the whole kind of test equipment kind of progress and it was done in such a rush that i I can't find much of the stuff because I plonked things in just loads of random boxes. However, I've just managed to find this ropey converter thing that I built. It's an attenuator, uh, big little jack converter to banana jacks and things like that. But there is one suggestion that I would suggest to anybody who wants to get into this sort of test equipment stuff. But the thing is, is you can get cheap test equipment on the internet still. I mean, for instance, just last week, I purchased a signal generator for about 20 pounds. But then the other thing is, how do you hook this stuff up to uh, like mixing desk and stuff? My suggestion is to just buy Buy an old mixing desk something like this this was the cheapest crappiest mixing desk I could find on eBay it probably cost I think nobody bid it on it it was like you know just a hench thing it was collection only from a, a town down my road so I just bought it I think it was about 10 pounds or something and I used this in between the test equipment and my recording and my other mixer and stuff so if something breaks and if the test equipment actually accidentally or some you know send something a little bit too peaky or a bit high voltage because it's known that the brawl and cures can send out 100 volts and stuff hence why it's a little bit sketchy having those on and letting people play on them because you know it's all it takes for a kid to pop a banana jack in their mouth and so it's probably a bad idea but uh yeah this means that if something breaks then you know it's not something that is really expensive and fancy and this has 16 channels so like you've got 16 chances and then after that you can it's just going to be the some chips in the preamp so you can replace them and stuff i personally haven't had any blowouts and i've been sending ridiculous amounts of things into this as long as it isn't mains voltage it's usually all right so uh that is what this is going to be for my old trusty mixing desk i'm going to call it the test equipment buffer because it's basically a buffer between between test equipment and my other stuff oh dear no there's nothing in this one this one is another one which we may not be able to use today, which is a shame. However, not to fear, I actually have another one of these and I fixed it. So uh, yeah, this one's gonna be for another video, I think. Really not lying. Oh my God, oh my God. Why not have any? Ooh, oh actually, that's just, it's literally, I think it's literally main tone. So this is gonna be our broken mains hum generator, it seems. Lovely. Not getting much life out of this one. Doesn't seem to even be getting power. The fuse is fine, the cable's fine, but... You would not believe it. It was, uh, it was the switch. So if you can't already tell, a lot of this stuff has seen better days. It's definitely not the end of their lives. However, they are a little bit liable to not be left alone and be left on because there could be a puff of smoke. All of this has got old capacitors and stuff. Uh, gosh knows when this stuff was stopped being serviced and such. Probably at some point in the 70s or the 80s, there's a varying ages of much of it. We've got this resembling a sort of sound. It is a little bit sketchy. There is definitely some corrosion on some parts that are making it not quite work. Oh dear, yet another thing to add to the to-do list of the never-ending list of fixing things. Oh, I thought I was really feeling like this one was gonna function. How about a transistor curve tracer? A 
analyze, god damn it, analyze. <laughs> Please analyze. Kilohertz. Ah, ooh, ooh, yeah. So this pile right here isn't actually particularly useful for musical application at all, I've got to be honest. So most of them are DC current calibrators, they're basically just, you can dial in the exact current you want. This central one is a DC voltage calibrator, actually it's quite useful, you can send out any voltage between zero and a thousand volts out of this. Needless to say, this one in particular is pretty lethal actually, and it does say on the front, danger, danger, high voltage, but... They do look pretty cool, and uh, that that has to count for something, at least. Come on, come on, come on. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. We're not incredibly useful, but we're incredibly cool looking. Let's get the wire and just see how many kilovolts this actually makes. Oh, it goes over. Oh, it goes to the top. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Oh, I best discharge this. This is another item that came with the lot. Whilst it does work incredibly well, it's not incredibly useful. For instance, the oscillator starts at a 40 kilo cycle, so 40 kilohertz, and you know, that is the lowest setting. Uh, that's way above any anybody's hearing. And whilst it could be used as a basis for a heterodyne oscillator sort of thing, but this might be cool in the video circuits area. That's where it might go. There is this absolutely awesome Nixie Tube digital multimeter. Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to find that input before I try this so if anybody has a cable like that or knows the name please let me know because this Nixie tube multimeter looks pretty awesome this is another one that has a funky power input uh, some of these I may have uh, just make IEC cables hanging out but uh, that's gonna require a little bit more modification and stuff but that doesn't mean we can't admire its insides can we now <laughs> look at those beautiful Brymar valves they are pristine I suddenly realized there's a storage bay on the back and I thought wait a second maybe it's got the power supply in it but alas nope that's empty. So this is yet another item that has annoyingly got a uh, dodgy power input. So this has got to have another IEC modification at some point. But looking at it, it looks like it's something to do with resistance. It's possibly a rheostat of some respect. It's quite a nice 19 inch rack case, but these, these were the things that like attracted me to it are these absolutely humongous humongous knobs on the front now on top of the pulse tech uh, rio stats we've got these rather quite fetching they look diy in some respects i mean are these variax are these actually rio stats are they the same these ones have the same knobs as the pulse tech uh rio stat possibly whatever it is got an old school beautiful old school plug on the end of it so maybe if i power it up and just plug something into the plug. Ooh. Well, this answers that. It's just a very large dimmer switch. Oh, how lovely is that? Actually, that would be awesome, having these plugged up as dimmer switches. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, that's a well good idea. Just have these on the wall for dimmers. Also got these rather fetching microphones. And there's one that's seemingly like a standard sort of carbon microphone. This oscilloscope calibrator, I was quite excited about until I had a look on the inside. Uh, yeah, there's a pair of tweezers I found in there. And also one of the potentiometers, this one to be specific, uh, is missing in the back. It's not a big problem because it's quite an easy to replace thing.
And by the way, I'm talking into the world's dodgiest microphone, which was also in the test equipment lot. There was two uh, dodgy microphones. This one, uh, it was broken. It had a broken cable. And I've done a video on modifying both of the two uh, microphones that came with it over on the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel. All in all, this lot of untested test equipment uh, turned out to be a bit of a, bit of a mixed bag. But that's fine. It's, it's part and parcel of taking a punt and stuff based on a couple of uh, slightly pixelated images where you can't actually read it out. Like, like, for instance, the DC current calibrators. I was sort of hoping we're going to be either signal generators, which are always useful for making sounds and stuff, or filters, but they were neither. They were the current calibrators, and you know, they are not the most useful of things. Sod's Law, they all work, and uh, Sod's Law, the things that actually make sounds, uh, are a little bit ropey, but it's fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on making, actually making uh, some sound out of these ones for a video coming up in a few days. Since the last test equipment rock video in the series, which was nearly a year ago now, uh, it just before the lockdowns happened, it was quite a big ordeal to have to get out, move and stuff in quite a rush just before the first lockdown came in. And it just meant that the test equipment projects and stuff were put on hold a little bit. And not to mention, I can't find the box with all of the converters that I have that makes me, uh, that lets me be able to convert between BNC, banana, jacks and all of the other things because uh, a lot of the test equipment that I have I try to um, standardize it by putting banana jack sockets at the front but these obviously still have BNC cables and it's quite a time-consuming thing to actually put banana jacks on the front of these and convert them because usually uh, the way the uh, test equipment is built and manufactured it's quite a uh, it's quite an ordeal to get to the front panel like a uh, there's multiple layers of electronics that you probably have to circumnavigate to get to the front. So I've got an awful amount of projects about me. I'm finishing off the next filter controller for the Game Boy Mega Machine. Uh, I'm fixing the floppy drive on the SWTPC that came from this lot as well. And I've got to get all of this working. And if you can see just behind me, there's this fantastically amazing, which is the museum's modular synthesizer. It's got an absolutely beautiful case made by Modular Perfection, who are making Cosmo format uh, Eurorack style cases. So it's basically like a Eurorack case, but it it houses Cosmo format uh, synthesizer modules. So there's going to be a video on that soon. And there's information on modular perfection. So if you want a custom, really top-notch uh, Cosmo case, then the links are below as well. Thanks a lot to the support on Patreon because uh, this was quite a punt and uh, yeah, uh, obviously like the support really helps out with videos like this. So if you want to keep on seeing videos like this, then please go and check out Overmore on my Patreon. There's also uh, quite a few bits of sound that are recorded in this video and they are all available as direct recordings and downloads over on the Patreon as well, as well as multiple live streams, extra vlogs and stuff like that. So if you want to support this random museum venture uh, and stuff like that, then please go and check out over on the Patreon. The links are below. Anyway, until the next test equipment video, when I finally get uh, some adapters through the post, uh, which will be rather soon, I'm Luke Mum No Computer, and yeah, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it.